So the answer to why I wrote White Lives Matter on a shirt is because they do. It's the obvious thing. I don't care about people's responses. I care about the fact that there's more black babies being aborted than born in New York City at this point. That 50% of black death in America is abortion. So I really don't care about people's responses. I perform for an audience of one, and that's God. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black and the vernacular that we're supposed to have about the, the White Lives Matter. You know, my dad is an educated um, ex-Black Panther, and he put a text to me today. He said, White Lives Matter, ha, 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 ha. And I said, I thought the shirt was a funny shirt. I thought the idea of me wearing it was funny. And I said, Dad, what do you think it was funny? He said, just, just a black man stating the obvious. I, I really felt like, I think I started to really feel this need to express myself on another level when Trump was running for office and I liked him. Yes. And every single person in Hollywood, from my ex-wife to my mother-in-law to my manager at that time to, you know, my, my so-called friends slash handlers around me told me, like, if I said that I like Trump, that my career would be over, that my life would be over. Uh, they said stuff like people get killed for wearing a hat like that. They threatened my life. They put my life. They basically said that I would be killed uh, for uh, wearing the hat. I had a, a, someone call me last night and said anybody wearing a White Lives Matter shirt is going to be greenlit, and that means that they're going to beat them up if they wear it. And I'm like, you know, okay, green light me then. <laughs> you know. You know, God builds warriors in a different way. I don't know if it's because of me being a born in Atlanta and growing up on the south side of Chicago that, you know, he made me for such a, such a time like this. It's like with David, you know, he tended to the sheep, but while he was out there, he had to fight all kinds of animals. So when it was time for Goliath to come, you thought because he was a sheep herder that he didn't have the skill set to take down Goliath. And the thing that I have is the position, I have my heart, but the number one thing is we have God on our side. And for the people, even if you don't believe in God, God believes in you. You know, I, did, I do certain things from a feeling. I like, I just, I just channel the energy, it just feels right. It's using a gut instinct, a connection with God and just brilliance, you know, like as if you ask like Tanya Harding how she did the, the triple flip or the triple spin, yeah. she was in so much practice that when it was time for her to skate in a, in a comp in competitive format, it just happened. Like it happened outside of practice, it happened in the real format. And that's, what hap that's what's happening is God is like preparing us for the real, for the real battles. And we are, we are in a battle with the media. Like, the majority of the media has a, a godless agenda. And the jokes are not working. This whole, like, oh, yeah, he's crazy and all these things, they don't work. Because the media has, you know, they've also watched travesties happen, just even specifically to me, and just watch it and act like it wasn't happening. And they stay quiet about it. Uh, for people that have some form of influence, whether it's an educated black woman like my mother that became the head of the English department at Chicago State University, or whether it's the most influential uh, white woman on the planet, being my ex-wife, they have people that are around them at all times telling them what to be afraid of. It's like not what to do or say specifically, it's what to be afraid of. And if you have a person that isn't afraid of them. They're not afraid to state what their opinion is. Yes. Everyone, no one is God, and everyone has an opinion.